Hi there everybody, this is David, and welcome to New RPG News. We have a bunch of stuff to talk about today, from showcases, from Nice America, to Namco Bandai, to Capcom, Square Enix, and even some 90s games getting revived and being put out on modern day uh, systems. So that's some very exciting news, and I do think that that is worth subscribing for, as I try my hardest to get up to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. It is like a long shot dream of mine, but hopefully with your help and your like, I can do it. So, first story, first up is Nice America is going to the Anime Expo. I'm also going to the Anime Expo! I'm going to be there! And I'm actually gonna be on a panel uh, talking all about Nice America's RPGs. It's just like talking about just basically all of them. That's essentially the panel. So this is very exciting for me. I've never done a panel before, so this is thrilling, and I am so looking forward to it. So this is at the Los Angeles Convention Center, and it's from July 4th through the 7th, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Even the president of Falcom himself will be there, Mr. Kondo. So that's really cool. There's an autograph session with him, and you get there quickly, and you get this exclusive Legend Heroes Chosen to Daybreak acrylic stand signed by him. Like, how cool is that? So there's various panels here. Um, the first one's on Thursday. I'm not going to be there on Thursday, so I'm going to miss this one. But yeah, the condo himself is going to be there talking about Ease 10 Nordics. There's another panel, Tracing the Trails of Trails. Kanda will be there as well. This is on Friday, as well with the voice actors and actresses of Van and On Yes. Then there is a Trails Through Daybreak panel discussion, again, with Kondo and the voice actors on Friday. An Ultimate Disgaea fan gathering on Saturday from 12 to 12.50. And then also on Saturday, my panel! Dive into the wide world of RPGs with Nice America. And it's with me and Brandon at Just the Gems and Cam Hawkins as well. Oh, good lord, Ken. Sorry about that. I'm so not re-recording. He just wanted to know if I wanted anything from the grocery store. So anyway, <laughs> this is the Anime Expo. That's where the Nice booth is going to be. Apparently, there's going to be a whole lot of other booths. I see a Namco Bandai booth over here, a Marvelous booth over here as well, gaming booths all sorts of stuff. There's the ability to play some demos, an Ease 10 Nordics demo, a Reynatus demo, Trails Through Daybreak, and a Phantom Brave the Lost Hero demo as well, which I definitely do want to get my hands, <clears throat> get my hands on, as well as some merchandise that you can purchase. So I do hope to see all of y'all there. If you are there, please come up, uh, please, please come up at, I can't talk today. Oh my gosh, Ken has me all thrown up. Please come up to me and say hello after the panel. I would love to meet you. So yeah, there we go. Really not the best way to start off the show. But anyway, Exceed Games announced the Anime Expo 2024 lineup, including a secret title. How exciting. So they're going to be showing off Far Magica. They're going to be showing off Corpus Party 2 Darkness Distortion, Naruto Emblem Battle, Potionomics Masterwork Edition, as well as a secret title, and there's various booth giveaways for all of these games as well. Um, it doesn't say if there's like a specific time or anything for this show to be happening. It just says that it's going to be going on uh, between the 4th and the 7th, and that they are booth E, uh, 110. I wish it said what time that they're doing their thing, but I guess not. Bandai Namco is doing a summer showcase on July 5th at the Anime Expo! Yeah, everybody's gonna be here. All the cool kids are gonna be here. This is on July 5th from 5.30 to 6.50 p.m. Pacific time, and it says, like last year's showcases, the panel-style presentation will feature a string of game news and reveals, including news and updates for Dragon Ball, Gundam, Sword Art Online, and more with surprises in store. Maybe a new Tales entry. Wouldn't that be fantastic? It also says, on the show floor, attendees will be able to get hands-on with demos of Dragon Ball Sparking, uh, Sword Art Online's fact, Fractured Daydream, and Gundam 4. So, yeah, very, very, very exciting stuff happening at the Anime Expo. I'm over on the Twitter, and more Anime Expo. Square Enix is going to be there. Apparently, their manga and books division is going to be there. Um, they're going to be at room 411 at 5.30 p.m. on Saturday. I am, again, I'm going to be there on Saturday, and that will be after my panel. So I'm definitely going to be going over to the Square Enix panel as well. 
to check out their little manga and books thing, and it says, leave us some rare swag. I need some more rare swag. I need to put some more stuff back here. Speaking of Square Enix, we have a post here from Genki, and he summarizes pretty much all of the various changes that are happening in Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D. I thought that I silenced my phone. I don't understand why it's still making noises. I literally, I hit the little red button to silence it, and it's still making noises, and now it's bothering me. It says the story is based on the original with some revisions under supervision from Yuji Horii. Akira Toriyama was not directly involved, however the art style respectfully imitates his style. You can choose either graphics mode or performance mode on the PS5 and Xbox versions. There's three difficulties, the Draki, Dragon, and Draconian, which is easy, normal, or hard. Three battle speeds, normal, fast, and super fast. There's auto battle, auto saves, random encounters, not on-screen encounters, classic JRPG gameplay with improvements, added sound effects and voice acting, orchestrated music, the world map is not flat, and it has a design that goes up and down. I think that, that what that's talking about is just whenever you go up hills, you know, it'll rise up. Or maybe whenever you're on the boat, it might sort of the curvature of the earth or something whenever you're flying around on Ramia or something like that. It also says the world map and mini map is always displayed. Camera cannot be controlled, but the zoom distance can be changed. You can dash in towns and fields. And during battle, the camera angle changes with each turn. So it's like a dynamic camera thing. So that's really cool. I actually put up a pretty detailed video about Dragon Quest 3 HD. If you wanted to go and check that one out, I'll put a link to that in the comments. So I just double checked my phone and it was on silence. I swear the thing is possessed. Anyway, Square Enix is still working hard on indie small scale games. The CEO says, oh, I don't know. I'm having, I'm having an off day, y'all. You'll have to excuse me. In the past fiscal year, Square Enix saw a 70% decline in net profit and posted an extraordinary loss of 22.1 billion yen. We already talked about this um, after abandoning previously greenlit projects that were deemed unprofitable. This was followed by the announcement of a big change in policy, including a focus on quality over quantity with regular AAA releases. Then they went ahead and they had a shareholder meeting and he was asked a couple of questions. When asked if the quality over quantity approach of the new business plan means no more indie games, the CEO responded, if we define indie games as casual, small to medium scale games, we're working hard on those too. I cannot name specific titles at the moment, but our development pipeline does not only include major titles. Indie game development should not be ruled out. So the death of all these small series has been greatly exaggerated. Incidentally, the same shareholder's question also included an inquiry as to how many AAA titles Square Enix intends to release per year. But Kiryu did not provide a figure, instead explaining that the company is prioritizing making well-timed releases, rather than achieving a specific yearly quota. Ha! Huh, hallelujah, somebody has a brain cell in their head. He notes that Square Enix past sales strategies had resulted in games cannibalizing one another. You think? Like, maybe releasing eight games within three months wasn't a good idea? Ha! Huh, you think? They intend to prevent this from happening again by focusing on the timing of new releases. Like, this is like Business 101. Duh, huh. I don't understand. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. But I am so happy that smaller scale games are still in the pipeline and that they are really focusing on Business 101. There was an interview with the president of Falcom, President Kondo, and he talked about the Future of the Trail series and the celebration of its 20th anniversary. And this is a long article. I'm gonna have to scroll through a lot of stuff here to get to what I wanna talk about. And I did make a dedicated video just on this, just the other day, I think on Thursday I released it. So maybe Wednesday, I don't even know. I think it, I think it was Thursday. I think so, I think Thursday. And uh, I released it there and I talked about this. So let's recap. Okay, so it says, please tell us what the future prospects of the Kaseki series. It's been going on for 20 years, but at present the early titles are difficult to play due to the hardware, and it's not easy for new users to get into the series. Of course, we would be happy if you started with Trails of Rey or Trails of the World, but I think that there are many people who want to play for the introduction of the series, so we're currently preparing something to respond to such voices, and we would like to announce it somewhere around the 20th anniversary, so please wait a little longer. We just had the 20th anniversary back on like the 24th. So it was just a couple of days ago, and yeah, they're talking about the beginning of the series. That's the Trails in the Sky series, and they're working on something to get people back into the Trails in the Sky series. So it's obviously remakes, 
remasters, we don't know yet, but it should be coming up with a forthcoming announcement. This is very exciting, straight from the president of Falcom himself. We are getting a Trails in the Sky remake of the trilogy. Then he goes, to, uh, then he goes ahead and he talks about the ending of the series. He says, this concludes the range that we decided to do at the beginning, which is the Liberal Kingdom arc, the Empire arc, and the Republic arc. But there are still some parts of the series that we want to draw on a little more, so Kaseki will continue into the future. However, it's been going on for 20 years already, so I don't think that it can go on for another 20 years. Above all, most of the mysteries will be revealed in Kai no Kaseki. So I've been talking with the staff about how the true ending is finally in sight. Kai no Kaseki is the Daybreak arc. Since we've made it this far into the series, we want to see it through to the end, and if we're going to go that far, we want to at least make it in a way that can be satisfied with. We definitely don't want to ruin the last 20 years at the very end, and we'll do our best to make sure that doesn't happen, so we hope for your continued support. He's basically saying he doesn't want to pull, like, a Game of Thrones, you know, and, like, ruin the ending, so he does want to put a cap on it, and I know that he said earlier that he's, like, 85 to 90 percent done uh, telling this story, and he just wants to wrap it up. So in Farewell, O Zamuria, which is the latest edition coming out in Japan, they're really trying to wrap up the story, and they're leaving Zamuria. And they're going to do another Trails series, but it won't take place in Zamuria. It'll be like a brand new Trails on a completely different continent or world or land or whatever. So don't worry about Trails like ending after this. It'll just continue on just in a new land. And that website that I mentioned, the Kaseki Series 20th Anniversary website, is live. There's a lot of good stuff on here, mostly purchases that you can make, all sorts of stuff from tote bags to little pins to posters to all stuff. There's a commemorative, a commemorative card giveaway campaign underway, um, all sorts of different stuff. T-shirts that you can buy, watches that you can buy. How cool is that? Those are some nice watches. There's all sorts of stuff over here on this website. I'll also include a link to this website in the video description as well. So if you want to go here and purchase any of these uh, trails items, you can for the 20th anniversary. And more trails news. It's never ending. I talked about this in the other in the video the other day too. We're getting Legend of Heroes Trails through Daybreak 2. It's coming west. This was this was leaked via the PlayStation Network. So this is kind of um kind of odd right here. So basically it says in the West, uh, if you had purchased Kuro Kaseki 2 in Japan, but you had your English language section set to English, if that makes any sense, then the logo changed from the Japanese logo into the English logo. So this is the new English logo right there. I mean, to me, it's no surprise that we're going to be getting Trails Through Daybreak 2. We've been getting every single Trails game, so it's like, duh, we're of course getting two. It's just a matter of when we're going to be getting this. So probably it says um, Nisa Miracle will host you know, a panel at the Anime Expo on July 5th, where the official announcement will likely take place. So we'll probably hear about it relatively soon at the Anime Expo that I'm gonna be at! We have a ton of information on Phantom Brave The Lost Hero, a debut trailer, details, and screenshots right here. We heard about this earlier on the Nintendo Switch Direct, uh, but now we have some more official information. It's coming out for the PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC. Uh, on 2025 worldwide. We don't have an actual firm release date for that. It says, it's set in Avori, a world made up of unique floating islands that depicts the adventures of a young girl named Morona who can communicate with phantoms, the spirits of those who have passed on. The game's appeal lies in its dynamic and versatile combat, allowing for th free movement across a gridless battlefield. You can utilize unique systems like Confine, enabling phantoms you've befriended to combine with and possess items on the map to fight alongside you. Additional systems will broaden your range of strategies, such as confronting Morona to a befriended phantom with strong bonds to alter the course of the battle, or confirming phantoms to gadgets on the map, like cannons and tanks. You can enjoy a plethora of side activities similar to those in the Disguise series, including character creation of over 50 units, strengthening your favorite characters with the maximum potential, exploring random dungeons for leveling up, and gathering items, as well as more. And there's some cute little screenshots right here that you can look at. Character introductions. There's a lot of different stuff here if you want to really dive deep into this game right here. It looks like it's using like a Grow Lancer type of battle system where there's circles and stuff also used in Diofield Chronicle. Uh, if you're wondering how they're going to do like the gridless system, that's probably how it's going to work. 
We have a Capcom Next Summer 2024 set for July 1st, featuring a couple of games. It says uh, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. This is going to be at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch it on YouTube in English or Japanese. But there's some more Capcom news. They put out a survey. Uh, not that long ago, called the Capcom Super Elections, with over 250,000 votes from around the world talking about what people's favorite games are. And a game that we all know and love uh, was featured quite a couple of times, Breath of Fire 3. It's right there as the 10th favorite Capcom game of all time. Akami is there too, the fifth favorite Capcom game of all time time. As far as Japan is concerned, it is their seventh favorite game of all time. Mega Man Legends is also here as the eighth favorite game of all time. So Breath of Fire has not been forgotten, at least by the fans. It's still here. Then they split it up by male versus female. Good lord, there's Breath of Fire in number 10. Um, over here, Okami in number one for the females. So yeah, they're both there. This is fantastic. Uh, we see right here, Breath of Fire 3 coming in at number 3 in the age range of the 30s through the 40s. So this is so freaking cool. Okami is up there as well. I would love another Okami game. Um, moving right along, there is even more. Yeah, we have a Breath of Fire 1 even here. I think that this is just series. Yeah, just the favorite Captain series. So it's not saying Breath of Fire 1, it's just saying it is a favorite series. It's the 6th favorite series for the Japanese players, and it's the 8th favorite series for the worldwide players. Okami is the 10th favorite series, the 8th favorite series over here in Japan. So hopefully, 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 hopefully Capcom looks at this and is like, oh my god, we should probably make another Breath of Fire. Inazuma 11 Victory Road Worldwide Beta Test Demo for the PS5, PS4, and PC launches in July. So if you want to get in on this, you can. It says, the demo launched first on Switch on March 28th and will end distribution today. After the distribution ends, the demo itself will still be playable until September 30th. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and join on the other systems, now you can. The beta, uh, the beta test demo is going to be launching sometime in July, and it's going to be releasing this year for the PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC, as well as mobile. Sometime in 2024, we don't have a release date quite yet. Mika and the Witch's Mountain launches August 21st for the Switch and PC, but later on in this year for the PS5, Xbox, PS4. Uh, as well. So if you so if you want for the Switch of the PC, you can get it earlier. If you don't, then you have to wait a little bit longer for it to come out. So it says that this is a fantasy adventure about an aspiring witch who delivers packages to the townspeople of a small island. Explore every nook and cranny and soar through the sky with your magic broom. The coming of age journey will take us to the top of the mountain through a story of effort, friendship, and community, and will let our hearts fly free. Take your magic broom and discover all the secrets hidden in the mountain while getting to know its charming inhabitants. Work hard and get a magic broom good enough to achieve your goal to go to the top of the mountain. Uh, I know that there was a lot of hubbub about this game earlier in the year. People were looking at it and they were like, wow, this is like a really good indie game. People were looking forward to it. It's one of those cozy type games and everything. So I wanted to keep you up to date on this one. And now for our final two stories. Some older games, including one from the 90s, are back! Yay! First one up. Riviera the Promising Rematch for the PC launches on July 17th worldwide. It's currently available only in Japan for the Switch and mobile devices, but now we're getting it worldwide with a 20% off discount price for the first two weeks after its release. It's going to include English and Japanese text as well as audio. So yeah, this first came out for the Game Boy Advance way back when. I want to say like Gosh, like probably like 2003, 2004, something like that, I want to say. I'm not entirely sure unless this thing tells me. I don't think it tells me when it first came out. But I do remember it coming out because I bought it back when. I couldn't really get into it, though. I couldn't really get into many of the Department Heaven sort of games. They were just kind of strange to me. Um, but I would like to check this out now that it has some modern quality of day of life improvements, such as a background music change function with five types of sound sources, a play mode with up to five times the speed, an event skip function, all illustrations are available in high definition, a reliable autosave function. I like how it says reliable. Like, 
Like, <laughs> as opposed to the alternative of an unreliable autosave. Like, what? <laughs> Ease of play greatly improved by difficulty level and mode selection. A boost function that allows you to quickly learn and level skills. Improved user-friendly interface. Function to switch voices between Japanese and English. And user-friendliness has also been further improved in the Steam version. Hopefully with all these QOLs, I can hopefully now finally get into this one. And in our final story of the day, Vey is coming back! Vey from 1994 on the Sega CD. And all credit to this goes to Draklin2244 for telling me about it in a comment, because I would have had no idea otherwise. This is so freaking cool! I loved this game. I was not a Sega kid. I didn't have a Genesis or a Sega CD or anything else like that, but I knew how to emulate, and I played this through emulation, and I really liked it, and it's working designs, and I love working designs, and now we're getting it so more people can play it. I love this. It looks like it's a hard mode, experience multiplier, gill multiplier. I don't remember them using gill. I thought they used gold, but whatever. Um, map speed, uh, a battle speed indicators so that you can really, you know, it has those quality of life features in it as well. This is so freaking cool. Let's see what it says. It says, a 16-bit cult classic RPG from 1994 returns with tons of improvements. When your peaceful kingdom is attacked on your wedding day and your wife-to-be is kidnapped, it falls to you to journey across the world and stop the terrible machines of war that threaten to lay waste to him. User-selectable difficulty makes this title great for both beginners and RPG veterans, compelling and engrossing story, nearly 10 minutes of animated cutscenes with English and Japanese audio. An autosave feature allows you to play in small increments, over 100 enemies and a dozen challenging bosses, over 90 expansive areas to explore, updated music that loops seamlessly, Bluetooth controller support, Steam achievements, and absolutely no microtransactions, because this is a game from the 90s, and it's back, and it's so exciting, and I love this. And who, who else would love to see more working designs, Lunar games coming to Steam? Like, this would be great. Pop full mail. Where are these games? Bring them out. Vanguard Bandits. Come on now. Bring them out. Arc the Lag Collection. Let's go. Let's go, Working Designs. Bring them all over to Steam. Ha! Huh, that would be so freaking cool. Anyway, that's it for this news. I want to know what you feel about it. I am super, super stoked about it. And as always, have a good day.